Hello and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle, Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. A couple of days removed from MLK Day. Hope y'all watched the MLK Day of Celebration we put up. If you didn't, go to the website and check it out. All that good stuff. I'm here, Todd's here. What up? It's cold outside. It warmed up, though. It was like 20 summers now in the mid 40s, which isn't bad. <laughs> I mean, 40 degrees to us after going through like 10 and 5 degrees feels like the first day of spring. It man. really does, though. <laughs> to outsiders, they'd be looking at us crazy, but you know, we kind of we like the 40 degrees. That's why we're know. angry up here. <laughs> <It's just bad. laughs> You know who's angry? The Pats. Well, not the Pats, but Pats fans just have to. I don't mind losing, but when you get your behind whoop like that, the way they did, it's just like, man, y'all might as well have stayed home if you don't go all the way out there to get selected like that. Honestly, I expected it. I expected it. I feel like people are praising this Mac a little too much. Totally forgetting he's a rookie, and then him, he reminded us, and the patch reminded us that there's still a work in progress. I mean, work in progress is the is the key word, and you just you just look at the way they lost. They ended the season four games in a row. They lost to end the season. Well, yeah, four games in a row. I'll, I'll put that. I don't count. Buff, I don't count Jacksonville as a game. I'll, I'll count that. They just weren't playing well going into the postseason. I mean, it's kind of like their season's kind of like a roller coaster. It yeah. started off, you know, kind of, it reached its peak, and then it pummeled it. <laughs> so that's kind of what you expect out of a Mac Jones season, though, as a rookie. Yeah. You, honestly, we didn't expect this much out of him. So for them to make it to the, make it to the wild card playoff. I just don't like how they played the block down the stretch, especially the offense. They were just... They were, I don't even know what you call the offense the last the last couple games. I mean, they put that, once again, I don't count Jacksonville as a team. <laughs> I, don't count, I, don't count, I don't count that as a game. That was like a, that was like a scrimmage. But to think, I, I would have thought they would have made this a little bit more of a fight for like, probably like the first half and maybe a little bit into the third. But... You know what their problem is too? They kind of they fell in the whole, the gimmick of the league is, you know, throw the ball 30 sometimes, totally disregard your running game. And what made us a, a successful team throughout the season is we were very balanced and we were not balanced this game whatsoever. And I'll be honest, I don't have much on this game because I was at Buffalo Wild Wings enjoying my time and I was like drunk by the second quarter. I was, I was, I was at the Celtics game. So I was at the Celtics game and it was on. So I was looking at the court and looking up. And then once I saw I got up, once I saw I was 20 nothing, my whole focus just went directly to the game because I was just like, yeah, these dudes aren't built to. They're not, they're not built to come back at all. No. They're, they're not. They, I think like Josh Allen just do whatever he wants to them. Five touchdowns. Do you have a rushing touch? No rushing touch. But yeah, five touchdowns. Yeah. They didn't punt the ball at all. They didn't turn the ball over at all. The only time they didn't score was when they took the final knee. Legit, they scored on all seven possessions. Like, that's just embarrassing for a defense. Like, oh, man. On, so, on to next season. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but this team, they need to make some some major moves. They need to get some speed on defense because their linebackers and some of the DBs look slow. They need to get an explosive playmaker on offense, an explosive wide receiver or something. I mean, Kendrick oh, Bourne's good. Oh, no, you have need. to get a wide receiver. We yeah. talked about this was a big difference. They have Trevon Diggs, mm-hmm. Trevon Diggs, right? Stephon. Stephon Diggs, brother's Trevon, right? Yeah. All right, Stephon Diggs with the Bills, and we didn't have one number one receiver for us all season. And Lord knows we probably wouldn't be playing the Bills if we had number one receiver yeah. this season. Like, <laughs> like some of those guys are good. Like Kendrick Bourne, he's pretty good. But, yeah, he's not a number one. And, um, yeah. This just goes back to the – I don't like to bring this back up, but this just goes back to Brady. All he asked for was a couple receivers or a couple more weapons. They could have gave him some money. If they, if they re-signed him, they could have got Stephon Diggs because he wanted to get out of Minnesota. And we wouldn't be having this problem, but, he, hey, such is life. The people in suits honestly think they're more important than the players. All he wanted was some a little bit more money, a new contract, and – 
And here we are now. And <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> right? Uh, the most competitive game all weekend was the Cincinnati Bengals and the Oakland Raiders. Because uh, all the other games, we'll, we'll get to it. But this game was the most competitive one. The Raiders, they, they played how they've been playing all season. They went down swinging. They went down with a fight. They had a chance at the end. I don't know. I don't know who went. Car was looking or trying to throw that because it was I, I swear it was like three Bengals in that area when he threw the ball. I just Michael caused me the season. Uh, <laughs> they put up a good fight. They just couldn't win. Yeah, and that's just kind of like they were making steps in the right direction as an organization yeah. early in the season, and then they just impl- exploded and imploded. <laughs> So I'm just happy they made it to the wild card. I'm happy they put up a fight because, you know, the biggest thing with the Raiders in the past was they won't put up a fight. Yeah. If they're not up, they're not coming back yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. And this team the past couple of years, they've been shown to always stay in the game, and you have to keep your foot in their neck in order to really take them out. Yeah, because I really was looking at that play a couple of times, that last play, and I'm just – I was like, yo, there's three, there's three defenders right there. And it, it wasn't – it was like at the goal line. It didn't go in the end zone. So I don't know. Maybe they were just like, yeah, whatever. That's, yeah. This is the season for us. But for the Bengals, you know, they've been the laughing stock for so long. This is their first playoff win in since 1990. Look, let's be honest. Text, text messages wasn't even <laughs> available Damn. when they were, were a playoff game. Let's be honest, though. Like, we knew Raiders weren't going to win it. So I don't want to hear you people talking about all oh, the Bengals. Plus, we trust me, me and Mook knew the Raiders wasn't gonna win this. We just liked the story that yeah. they were continuing to have. And there was some questionable calls <laughs> ha- happening in uh, the officials in this game. There, were, there was a lot of questionable things happening with the officials in this game. But yeah, for the for the Bengals, this is, this is pretty. This is good for them. It was such a young team. They got so many young talent for them to get that experience of winning a playoff game and just to know how you have to play in the postseason. And, you know, Joe Burrow, he looked cool, calm, and collected the whole day. Yeah, he did. There. And Chase was out there killing. Yeah. Their energy was just yeah. – they, they just had great energy as a whole compared mm-hmm. to the Raiders. And honestly, they're probably going to have some of the best energy in the playoffs just because they're so hungry yeah. for this playoff success and people has been – Trash in Cincinnati forever. Yeah, and also the way this NFL season has been going, you have no still. I still have no idea who's actually going to be the favorite to win this to win it all. So with them, anything's possible. They're going on the road against the Titans, the number one seed, and I, I, the Titans. They're good, but every I don't know, man. The Titans are like the team. Like everybody's just like he, they're good, but. We don't know how they're doing it. And it was like, we're not, we don't believe that they'll go all the way. That's what the Titans are. Like, they're trying to make people into believers. But yeah, this, this should be an interesting game because the two, two different styles. And again, Henry coming back. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Hey, once the Titans re implemented that, re implemented their running game, or figured out their running game again, yeah. they, were, they were back to being the Titans. And yeah. now they got Derrick Henry, Henry coming back. They're going to go back to being the Titans. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that game <laughs> a little bit. Another one. This one, I know, you know, I've been saying for like the the wildest. I don't know why people keep uh, keep this like, past couple of weeks. They've been praising Big Ben and making him seem like he's like this this nice guy who was like a great guy and all of that stuff. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, get him off to my TV. Get him up out of here because he look. <laughs> I'm not even talking about like, you know, that stuff. <laughs> that yeah, stuff. I'm talking yeah. about. He hasn't looked good the past two seasons. He looked no. horrible, and you know, and it was just time. It, it was just time. You know me. I don't have much sympathy for millionaires, <laughs> but just because, like, I don't care what you say, you buy happiness. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he looked bad out there the past couple years, yeah. man. He just looked as just. Overall, yeah. old, bad, so, rough. Can't throw down. Putting on mad weight, and he just looked like he just just he's just out there just for a couple, for a couple more dollars, and just to make some of these fans happy because yeah, yeah I think he's ready. No, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's you. If I mean, that's like if somebody's gonna offer you offer you all that money, and you're just like, well, well, yeah, I guess might as well. Let me let me get this. Collect a few more checks before I get up out of here. It kind of like he was coming to work just to come to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, who, you know who came to work was the Chiefs because they were out there fooling. They got the linemen catching touchdowns. They got Travis Kelsey throwing touchdowns. <laughs> I don't care about none of that. I had them by 30. You almost had them by 30. Stop playing games, man. Oh, yeah, they, they gave them those sympathy touchdowns. Yeah, man. 
You're supposed to put the smack down. Um, you're supposed to like really send Ben out on a low note, the lowest of notes. Hey, man. <laughs> but one thing about the Chiefs, everybody keeps keeps saying about all these other teams that that should or are gonna go to the Super Bowl, and they keep overlooking the Chiefs. But the way these guys have been playing, it's they've been playing a. Like, they're not playing. We're gonna try to chuck the ball down down the field and get a big play. They've been they've been playing. We're gonna run it, or we're gonna give you some short passes since you don't want to give us the deep passes. They've been like methodically moving the ball. So basically, you mean when they play regular like adult football <laughs> compared to Madden football? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Cause they, they they were just I don't know what they was doing anything out there. They started off slow, but then and then. Second quarter came around and everything started clicking for them. And once again, another home playoff win for Mahomes and the, and the boys. He hasn't. He has yet to go on the road in the playoffs in his career, and he has yet to lose a playoff game in his career. So, but one thing I will say about Ben, though, he did not throw an intel. Your, your last game to go 29-44, 2-15, two touchdowns. Yeah, eh. He didn't give him a chance to intercept it because he was throwing it <laughs> short the whole time. <laughs> they, they didn't have a chance to intercept it. I mean, but he'll be, he'll, he won't be that mad to stat line. He'll be like, it's my last game ever. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Granted, it was like down a whole bunch. He was doing that. Hey, it's not going to say that to stat line. <laughs> oh, man. And in another game that we knew the results before this game even happened was the Buccaneers and the Eagles. Absolutely. Uh, and this, this was just, yeah, the Eagles stood no chance. They, they stood no chance. They, yeah, the Bucs just, the Bucs just jumped on them early, got that big lead, and, and that was a wrap because they know the Eagles are not built to come back from big leads. And their quarterback was missing a whole lot of throws. I'll be honest, but, hey man, Eagles this year aren't built to be anybody good. I think they were like 0-7 against good teams. So with that being <laughs> said, they know like, all right, Hurts, we have to make Hurts throw the ball, but like we have to definitely cut off the running game completely. Yeah. Because Hurts, Hurts, I mean, yeah, Hurts throwing the ball 43 times with two intos. Yeah. Like you know he was going to just give them to the book. It's because he's not conditioned to throw it that much. Yeah, he's he's yeah. a dual quarterback. So. And he's not that accurate. Like his passes yeah. aren't, he's he's really inaccurate, especially when they get him under the rest. Like, that's what they were doing. Oh, that, that Bucks defense defensive line, well, they, was, they was coming for him, make, getting him out the pocket, and it was just, yeah, it was just a, it was just varsity versus JV out there. Yeah, they got a sailing. The Eagles have a sailing yeah. at this point. Right yeah. now, with the plays they have, they can only go so far. Yeah. And once they, once they hit the upper echelon of the league, yeah. Huh. It's curtains. And with the Bucks, it's next man up mentality. You know, granted, the old reliables came to play. Mm -hmm. Mike Evans, Gronk, Gronk came to play. And, you know, Gio, Gio Bernard, he came off injury. But you got to like what they did, especially offensively, getting those two running backs, Bernard and Vaughn, 17 carries for one, 13 carries for another, and they were very productive. And then Brady just – he had all the time in the world out there until one of his one of his uh, tackles got hurt. But he had all the time in the world out there to dissect yeah, and, that and, defense. And, and it's, it's dope that – they were balanced because the whole season, you know, they were going with that whole rely on Brady's arm, totally forgetting that you have a running game, and that's what wins you championships at the yeah. end of the day. So, yeah. I like, you know, but the Bucks know what the Bucks know what they're doing all season. They're toying with the league, so yeah. they know once it's prime time, they, they, yeah. they're going to do a wins games. Yeah, definitely, and it, it also helps that they're getting a lot of their guys back that missed the majority of the season, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Their, their DBs are, are back in here, so... Yeah, good luck. Good luck to everybody. The Bucks, well, they'll be playing the Rams. We'll talk about that. Yeah, the Rams. We'll get into that before. But first, we got to get into the Cowboys and the 49ers. I just want to say I picked the 49ers to win this game because who I pick? You and Stevie both picked the Cowboys. Okay. Because I, don't, I said it all year. It's just the craziest things happen in, with the Cowboys in playoff games. And this one, I don't know if you watched this whole game or the last part of this game, the last five minutes of this game. I watched Dak run up the middle. It was and, like. And then the ref, like, bump him and waste time and try to spike the ball. And it was so, a whole mess. So, on that. Only game I didn't see. On that, the ref had every right to because. You gotta hand the ball off to the ref so he can spot it. Uh, That's legit. The, you can't you can't spot it yourself as a player. The ref has to ask because you know you spot it yourself. You might not spot it in the right spot. Yeah. So the ref has to spot the ball. He has to touch it. So they were so normally 
if you, uh, normally when, when stuff like that happens, people try to find a ref right away to give him the ball and then everybody get lined up. Okay. But here's my thing with this that whole last sequence. Number one, why are you calling a draw play mm. with 14 seconds left? But number two, if you do call a draw play with 14 seconds left, it was a second and one. Once you got that first down, just slide or spike the ball. Like they could have spiked, they could, they actually could have spiked the ball on the second and one. I don't know why they didn't spike it before they did the drive, the, that dive play. I don't know why they didn't spike it, cause they knew time was not on their side, and for him to go up, I mean, he went like 15 yards, and so they just tick, 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 boom. You're, you're, it's, it's. Mathematically, it doesn't happen. It, it never happens like that. When, when you don't have no, you have no timeouts and it's under 50, under 20 seconds, you're, you're playing with fire because the, oftentimes people don't get the plays off. And the Cowboys, they did everything to lose this game. Granted, the 49ers helped. The 49ers did everything to lose this game too. For you to lose to a quarterback who didn't even <laughs> throw a touchdown, it's kind of like the microcosm. Or the Dallas season, and like gave you two, and gave you an interception. <laughs> he like gave him an interception. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember I had this conversation over the phone, and I'm like, yo, my uncle came to the house the day, day before the game. He was ecstatic, excited, happy, and then I then I was telling my relatives to check on him <laughs> after the game because of how ridiculously they lost. Like you couldn't even make this up. No, <laughs> like. <laughs> And then the Zeke only with 12 carries. Like, what happened to this guy? Is yeah. he still a football player? Yeah, man, just look at look at the Cowboys' mistakes. How many ter- how many penalties there? Uh, 14 penalties. Oh, I didn't want to get to that. Bro. 14 penalties, and then some of the penalties down the stretch. They had the one, the holding one on, the, on uh, I think it was Randy Gregory who tackled the guy. And gives them another first down. Then they had a hands to the face that gave them another fourth down. This was all down the stretch in the fourth quarter. And it was, oh, my goodness. It was just like, do you guys realize that this is a playoff game? <laughs> yeah. And I'll be honest, they just looked bad. Yeah, they, they, they couldn't do much of anything. They yeah. couldn't get their running game going. Could barely get their passing game going. Yeah. And, you know, the biggest thing with Dallas was their, um, their three-headed monster. I didn't even see a monster out there. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. That was out there. <laughs> and then also the quarterback, the quarterback got, that got all that money. This is when that. This is when it's time to pay off on that contract you signed, and he was not good at all. He was. He wasn't good. Like this is what you get paid the big bucks for 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 games like this. At, at least. He could have made it competitive or whatnot. Then people would say, okay, they, they bought. But it wasn't even the case. And like, the worst thing is you'd be having people like us vouch for y'all and stuff about getting y'all money and stuff. Right? And then y'all perform like this when it's time to perform. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it was just all bad. It was, it was all bad. But kudos to the 49ers. They did enough just to win, even though they tried to give the game away. But they, they did all the right things. They ran the ball with, They ran the ball 38 times. They got to the quarterback five sacks, created tur- turnovers. It, they just dominated this game. And, and they're realistic. Yeah. They know what type of quarterback they have. <laughs> They're not going to try to lie to the world and try to make this guy do stuff that he's not comfortable doing or they know, like, they don't even feel comfortable with him doing. Yeah. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. Stop lying to yourself sometimes and just understand who your quarterback is and just yeah. do do the best with the skill set that he has. Yeah, definitely. So, 49ers and Packers in the next round. All right, and then the last game of Wild Card Weekend was the Rams and, and the Cardinals, another blowout. And the Cardinals, man, man. We thought to talk about one team that looked bad in the Cowboys, the Cardinals. Yo, after Kyle Murray threw that interception, pick six in the red zone, I was like, yo, this game is over. Because he was just like, eh, we get it. I'm just going to throw it up. Yeah, man. <laughs> they were done. Yo. They were first half, they were done. You go down 21 nothing. That's why I was like, the Rams, the way they played in the second half, I would have been, they just coasting. They're just trying not to lose the game. <laughs> They look like deer in the headlights, the Cardinals. That's what they look like. They all oh, the quarterback didn't look the quarterback looked shell shocked. The defense looked shell shocked. And it was yeah, it, it was pretty bad. And then also we have to mention that Baker Mayfield tried to rob us of Odell Beckham Jr. because everybody was saying it was his fault in Cleveland. Now it was going well. But for some reason he gets to he gets over here. He I think he's caught like seven touchdowns since since the trade. We knew. And, we knew whose fault it was. We all knew whose father was over here. Yeah. And so I'm glad OBJ got out of there. I'm glad Stafford got his first playoff win. His dad, um, needs, his dad needs to get like an award or something. Who? Odell Beckham Jr. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but you know, 
I'm just happy for Stafford, just because the way the the world has been bashing him for his lack of success in the past, which was like over like ten years ago, Man. right? No, I'm just saying, right? Man, there there are some guys that go to the playoffs that can barely squeeze out a win. You know what I mean? So for him to get there, what second time, third time the most. This is four. Yeah, this has been like 13 years, something like that. All right, well, he hasn't, he hasn't been there enough. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he finally got out of that that, rec, that record book. Oh that yeah, because if, if he ain't win this game, woo. yeah, because I see the stat, I was like, oh my goodness. Man, if he didn't win this game, man, the scrutiny for this one, like specifically for him though, with this team, like man, it would have been through the roof. And it kind of shows, like, granted, they still have games to win. It shows when you're, like, a number one draft pick and you have a solid team, what kind of monster you create. So, they're looking great right now. Yeah, everybody's picking them to be the favorite right now. We'll, get, we'll talk about the next round in a second, but first we're going to go to Craig. He's going to talk about Pat's ending season and give his picks for the divisional round. But, yeah, we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk the divisional round. What up, everybody, and welcome to No Huddle here on After the Whistle. As always, it's your boy Craig uh, here to talk uh, Patriots and postseason. Uh, so, Patriots got knocked out of the playoffs by Buffalo in what could only be described as a big brother butt whooping. Um, it was super embarrassing. Um, defense couldn't stop anything, offense couldn't make anything work. Out coached. Out quarterbacked, out def- de- out defensed. Uh, it was just a complete obliteration. Uh, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills put on a clinic, and to be honest with you, as a true blue Patriots fan, you know my heart is broken. But as a pure football fan, that was an incredible game of football played by Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the first touchdown pass to Dawson Knox that looked like Josh Allen was just getting ready to throw it away. Uh, the pass was incredible. The catch and landing in the end zone was just uh, true football at its finest. Uh, it was a, you know, I, I really only watched the first half, but what an incredible first half it was. Uh, Josh Allen is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, teams should be terrified at what he'll be capable of uh, ha- as as long as he remains healthy and has weapons around him. Uh, with that being said, Patriots in the offseason, uh, what needs to be addressed? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we don't have a number one wideout. Um, I can't think of a single team that without the likes of Tom Brady that didn't have a number one wide receiver and was successful uh, all year long uh, making playoff and Super Bowl runs. Um, We need a number one guy. Some guys that are coming available, uh, my favorite target would be Allen Robinson. Uh, I love Allen Robinson. Uh, I think he is a gritty, keep your your mouth shut and do your work football player. Um, And I think he would be an incredible addition uh, to the New England Patriots. Uh, Chris Godwin uh, will be on the market in the offseason. I, I love Chris Godwin, although he had a season-ending uh, knee injury, which that bothers me. I feel like wide receivers uh, with bad leg injuries, some a lot of times they don't return to form, and I would hate to waste money on a wide receiver uh, that won't remain healthy. Uh, one wide receiver on the market that that wouldn't be on the market in, uh, as a free agent but would be on the market uh, for trade value is Calvin Ridley. You know, a name that we that that kind of disappeared from the season. Uh, personal issues had him uh, taking the remainder of the season off early on. Uh, no word as to why. Was it mental health? Was it family issues? Uh, substance abuse? Um, you know, just, you know, a need to step away from the game. I don't know, but he is an incredible talent. Uh, and I would like to see the Patriots maybe make a move for him. Uh, I do like Juju Smith Schuster, but I don't believe he is a number one wide receiver. Uh, I do believe he is a true number two. 
Uh, so that, I believe, is the biggest issue the Patriots have. We've got the run game. We do have a good defense. Um, we may need a linebacker, a fast linebacker, good at stopping the run, but uh, because we aren't very good at stopping the run, uh, maybe we need a better defensive coordinator. I don't know. Uh, let's talk about the playoffs. Uh, we got uh, Titans versus Cincinnati. Uh, I think Joe Burrows is on fire. I think Tennessee taking it taking a week off is gonna hurt them. So I got Cincinnati taking taking that. You got Kansas City uh, facing Buffalo Bills, and the way Josh Allen is playing, I can't see Patrick Mahomes beating him. So I'm gonna give that one to Josh Allen and the Bills. Uh, Green Bay facing the 49ers, and once again. I think it's going to be a week of upsets. I think the 49ers are going to are going to knock out Green Bay uh with that incredible defense and the good run game. Uh Jimmy Garoppolo's playing good football, George Kittle, Debo Samuel's is unstoppable, so I think that they're going to take it. Uh finally, you have uh Tampa Bay and they're going to be going up against the the uh LA Rams and I got to be honest, I think the Rams take it. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, until next week, I'll see you on uh, No Huddle. Back to After the Whistle. And we are back. Thank you, Craig, for that. Okay, divisional round. We are down to... Huh, we're down to eight teams, you know. 49ers, Packers, Rams, Bucks, Bills, Chiefs, and Bengals, Titans. First off, we're going to talk this 49ers, Packers game. This is their second meeting of the season. I think I think a few of these teams already have met. Mm-hmm. I think this is another weekend where we've got teams that are that met before in the in the regular season. So the, the first time, I think the Packers won it. I believe this was in San Francisco. I believe it was. It came down to the wire. To the, it was a it was a wire to wire game to this one, but. It's like two contrasting styles, but for the Packers, this is the team that matches up with them just because of the way they play on def- on offense, the way they run the ball, and then their defense, th- their front four really gets to the quarterback, and the F- Packers O-line been in and out and stuff like that. So. Yeah, the only thing I tell the Packers to do, man, is force Jimmy to throw the ball. Oh, man. They nah, like, them. you got to completely shut down the run. You got to force Jimmy to, to be Brady or do something. <laughs> or Yeah. <laughs> like you can have that boy throwing the ball 40, 50 times. Like. Yeah, the last time they met was I believe week week number four at San Francisco won it thirty eight to nothing. And that game, yeah, in that game Jimmy threw it forty times in in that in, the, in well, that game. Make him throw it even more. And so yeah, the Packers did. Yeah, they did they, they exactly. <laughs> Dad tried to make Jim, Jimmy G beat him. But the, pack, the, the 49ers know what's good for them. They're going to get the ball to Debo. Yeah. Just get the ball to Debo in whatever way you can because Debo, he's just out there. Anytime he touches it, running or passing the ball, he he's out there breaking long runs. And for the Packers, I think they're going to have to rely more on their running game because who knows how cold it's going to be out there in Lambeau. Yeah, but you so, know, Rodgers built for that. You know what he's going to do. He's going to give you at least two, three touchdowns. And yeah, with the little history that I've seen from uh, – that I just went and looked at <laughs> the performances up there in the playoffs in, at home. Has not been great for him? Oh, man. Yeah. Has it been that bad? It, 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 it hasn't been good. <laughs> it hasn't been good. Well, he, yeah. <laughs> he got a chance to change that and make that right? Yeah, he, yeah, actually, in the playoffs, he plays better on the road than at home. And – I mean, Lambo is kind of ice built. Man, yeah, it's it's that cold temperature. So, but good thing with them, both their running backs are healthy: AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones. So we're gonna see two contrasting styles. But you know what he could do to get ready? Remember that thing on ESPN when when um, Brett Favre used to walk around butt naked. <laughs> Get ready for the game, man. Gotta get your body temperature right. Hey, he a kid, Cali boy. Like, <laughs> he should be used to. He should be used to the weather by now out there. Like, come on. Been the old career, bro. All right, and then the <laughs> other game in the divisional round is set is the L.A. Rams against the Tampa Bay Bucks. This time it's another meeting. They met in week three or four earlier in the season in L.A. This time this one is going to be in Tampa. Once again, the Rams are flying high after dominating these guys, after dominating Arizona. People are, you know, people are using that one game glimpse and thinking that it's going to be the same result. But from what we've learned in life and watching football and having Tom Brady on your court, on your team, you beat him once, 
you beat his team once, it's going to be hard to beat him a second time, <laughs> especially in the postseason. And it's just, hey, we just came in line. Like, you just don't bet against Beatty. And, and this is going to be an interesting, interesting game because the one thing the 49ers can't do is they can get after him. I feel like Brady's one of them guys. I said 49ers, Rams, I'm sorry. I feel like Brady's one of them guys, like, if he was a boxer, he'd let you beat him if the belt wasn't on the line. <laughs> but when the belt's on the line, he's going to pumble you. <laughs> like, beyond belief. <laughs> Brady is petty. He remembers <laughs> losses. He remembers missed catches yeah. from, from himself. He, was, he remembers all that stuff. Yeah. So with that being said, he's going to come out there and compete. Like, did, did they forget who Brady is, though? Yeah. And in that game, in that game, it was pretty close. It was close, and then that third quarter happened when the Rams scored 17 points in that third quarter to kind of separate themselves. And that, it was like little mistakes here and there that they made, but they didn't have Odell Beckham Jr. in that game. They doing this one, and... For the Bucks defense, they really have to, they really have to lock in because now it's not you don't have to now it's not Cooper Cup you don't got to deal with now you got to deal with OBJ who's who Matthew Stafford is actually getting the ball to in in the right position so it's definitely gonna be interesting but with the buck with the Bucks you're not gonna be able to run on them and if their front four starts getting to you those guys on the in the back end they're very opportunistic and they'll make you know Stafford has been shown he'll he'll give you opportunity to to take one of Way. Yeah, yeah, and you know Brady's gonna make the best of it with the receivers he has filling yeah. in for some guys that are missing. So mm-hmm. hopefully they definitely come to play because the Rams receivers are ready. Yeah, yeah, and the Rams in general, they they're probably more energetic. They probably get enough of this game because they were up for the first one, but like, this one was more on the line too. So, but I also think they might be kind of humble to the sense of yeah, we just whooped on the Cardinals, but who are they compared to this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, this. this it's true, and also the you know the, the the Bucks. They probably remember all that celebrating and the dancing that was going on in that game too. So you know, and I, I feel like the world forgot who was just holding the trophy a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like I think <laughs> like, it's, a, it's a lot easier for everyone to. I said this. I said this in college football. I don't know why people talk themselves out of picking Alabama when they play like Cincinnati and stuff like that, and other teams. Like people are talking themselves out of trying, out of the Bucks actually winning this game and not giving them a chance. It's just like. Ugh. But you know what it is? It's because the Rams are, are the new kid in school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a new kid, everybody, oh, but who's that? Yeah. You, know, you talk about him for like a month, and then he turns to a regular kid. <laughs> 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 All right, and then another in the AFC. This is these teams, the the Chiefs and the Bills. They met in the AFC Championship game last year at, at Arrowhead. Now they meet again in the divisional round, and it's just like the the quarterback that people are saying is going to overtake Mahomes. And then you got the guy that's been reigning supreme in the AFC the past three years. So. And you got a team that's coming in hot, too. So it's like both teams are coming in hot, especially the Bills. But you're on the road in Kansas City. And, yeah, all that stuff is great at home and stuff like that. But we've seen people go in Kansas City and they just get shell-shocked by the fans and things just don't go their way. And the playoff times, you never know what happens over there. As long as Mr. Allen plays with some sense. They'll be all right in this game, yeah. but I just don't think they'll be able to. He'll, he'll be able to outdo Mahomes. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the thing about jo- Josh Allen. Like he'll play with some sense, but then there'll be a little glimpse here and there during the game where it's just like he does something that he shouldn't be. Do- he's not supposed to do, it, and then it just turns. For example, like that first touchdown against the Pats. You can get away with that with these guys holding the ball for nine seconds, just rolling around. You do that against these guys, Honey Badger. Most likely, you pick that pass off, you know, so it's like... You can tell sometimes I watch certain quarterbacks, which guys are quicker thinker. Yeah. Mahomes is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like he could either... He could play around and throw long balls, or he can really get in his bag mm-hmm. and be efficient. Yeah. And knock the passes down like Brady does. Yeah. So it's all about what Mahomes actually wants to do. Yeah. And the, and <laughs> like, the, the great... The, the best part about this matchup is it's both... Both quarterbacks have one guy that they can just be like, I'm just going to throw it up because he down there somewhere. He's going to make a play. So they got Stephon Diggs and Tyreek Hill. So they both got two receivers that, when in doubt, just throw it in their direction and they'll and they'll make plays. And it's, it's yeah, it's going to come down to who's going to And they got a the dual play. threat tight end. 
Mr. Kelsey out there <laughs> catching and throwing. Hey man, both these teams had line both these teams had linemen catching touchdowns in the game. The Bills also had a lineman catch a touchdown in the, in, in that playoff man, game. Man. So. All, all type of dude threat right? all type of dude threat players, huh? On your roster. And it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be very intriguing because of the offenses that is both but both are pretty explosive offenses, so it's gonna be the defenses need to step up. All right, and last thing about the Bills though, I mean we saw I just saw a clip of one of their DBs or I don't know who it was, he was talking about this was before the Pats game, talking about this is gonna be the end of an era and blah 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 and I was just like <laughs> Bro, that era ended like two, three years ago, brother. Era <laughs> ended once Brady left. What once once the goat by the way, like <laughs> it was and, over. And the pass ain't even make the playoffs last year. What are you talking about? The, and <laughs> oh, they had to psych themselves up to play Mac Jones. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was just one. I was like, man. <laughs> see, you know what? That's the last. See, that is the last in effect of Brady and the Patriots. Yeah, Brady, Brady definitely gave a, the Bills PTSD. And also, <laughs> he, he beat them earlier this season. <laughs> and last game, last one, Bengals and Titans. Derrick Henry is coming back, which is big for the Titans because I don't know how, I don't know his conditioning or not, but when you got a 250 guy that runs the ball the way this guy have, has, and they can, be, they can keep, the Bengals' offense on the sideline. That is the key right there. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to say. They need that man to keep Burrow on the sideline. Yeah. And also, they're up there. the guy that filled in for Burrow, for, uh, the guy that filled in for him wasn't too too shabby himself. Uh, what's his name? I, I don't even know his name. But, yeah, the backup running back that they had that filled in, he wasn't too That's what I was saying. Bad, how so. that they, they re-implemented the running game. Yeah. They, they got him up to speed because it, it took him like a game or two to figure it out when they yeah. figured it out and he was all right. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Titans hosting a playoff game. They're the number one seed, which nobody actually thought they would get to be the number one seed. So we're, we're, we're going to see just how, how built they are for this run. And I don't know if the Bengals are going to be like, all right, Ryan Tannehill, you're gonna beat us because we're not. We're gonna put eight in the box, and you're gonna have to find a way to beat us. Because I mean, that'd be my game plan. I'm yeah, gonna, it has to yeah. be. <laughs> it has to be when when they when their running game isn't um set in place, Tannehill doesn't do well. Yeah. Once he gets the once the running game gets going, then he flourishes. Yeah. So. This, and the Tigers have been they, they've been the least talking about teams all all, see, all year long. And they just been you know everybody overlooks them when they're talking about all these all the teams that with the potential of winning a Super Bowl. The Titans, everybody you bring up the Titans, they be like yeah yeah maybe, and then you just move on. But these guys are so and then the Ch and then the Bengals are coming in red hot, and you know everybody they're like the darlings right now because just, one because they've been so bad for so long, and two because the, they got the quarterback who's just all world and then. All the talent around, so it's just like, oh, yeah, maybe we'll wait and see this weekend. Yeah, we'll wait. Well, we shall see. We <laughs> shall see. All right, let us go to Athlete's Corner. This one, we got Tony Gallo up in here, and he talked about his program, and also they're doing open runs at Breed Middle School. We talked about some good stuff, so check that out. And then we're gonna come back with some high school sports update. Hello and welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner, first interview of the year, actually. And welcome back, Tony. I think what was it last two years ago? The last time you was on here? <laughs> maybe, maybe three. It's, yeah. been a, it's been a while when we first started up. <laughs> yes, sir, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah. Can't complain. Yeah. Sticking, sticking with the grind. Yeah. Um, living, living the dream. Yeah, you know your organization. I see you guys expanded. A lot more players coming through. Right. A lot more players getting looks from the workouts that you've been that they've been doing with you. I mean, yeah. how does that feel? Just you know, your, these kids they're working the hard work that they've been doing with you is start is paying off. Um, I mean, that's everything. Uh, I got into it uh, first of all for the love of the game, um, but then I. My, my goal is always to, to grow and to reach as many kids as possible that, that needed a guy like me. Um, obviously, on the court stuff, we have a lot of success getting kids to the next level, yeah. um, playing at whatever level they can kind of get to. But the program is really is a membership, is mentorship based. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm dealing with kids, kids family lives and, yeah. and off the court issues and, and success, um, which is 
which is good, which is a good feeling. Yeah, that's, the, that's, feeling. The, that's the best part about programs like yours because a lot of kids, they'll, they'll come to that knowing they got certain issues going on either at school or at home right. they, might, they might not want to talk about or they do want to talk about. They come to your program, they use that as an outlet. They use basketball as the outlet to just open exactly. up, open themselves up to certain situations. Exactly, and that's, that's what it is. It's, we're, we're building confidence, building self-esteem on the court, which then kind of translate off the court to the academics, to real life. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's been a fun journey. It's kind of put in, put in what I, my, my ideas to, to real life and, mm -hmm. and just excited to watch it continue to grow. How is it, how was it, you know, we didn't get you on during the quarantine year. Well, I mean, we're still. <laughs> right, still coming through it. But in, in, in the peak of it in 2020, how was, how was that? You know, when everything had to shut down, I know a lot of, a lot of player developers, a lot of trainers, they, they started doing virtual stuff, but how was that for you? Right. Um, yeah, it was tough. It was it was a it was a time of innovation. So we had to be creative. We had to do a little more virtual training. Uh, had to create different platforms to to still reach the kids. Um, in a, in probably the most important time of, of of need, you know, when everything shut down. And I kept luckily I've had I had my own small facility. So I, again, I I kept going a little bit. I didn't didn't do any, any small groups, did more personal training, just got one kid in the gym at a time, um, make sure he cleaned other balls, cleaned the whole gym. It was a half an hour process in between yeah. each workout. So we couldn't do as much, but again, we had to be creative, had to, had to find a way. I mean, yeah. we, we're given obstacles in life and we gotta, we gotta hurdle them. Yeah. And you couldn't have as many, and you know, you usually have the, a big group of kids that, that come in on a certain day. At that time, you couldn't really, you could only have a certain amount. Yeah, I mean, at, at that time, they kind of shut it down, so we yeah. can't do anything. But yeah. um, for me, I just didn't think it was fair for the kids. We kept, we kept the precautions going, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we didn't do any group stuff. We, it was really one-on-one -on -one based, or oh. just a family. If it was brothers, a couple brothers and sisters, we'd get yeah. you in at once. But yeah, it was, it was a different time. <laughs> it was yeah. a different time, and I'm just happy that way. We're back on track in a sense, um, and seeing what the future has in hold. And you're able to have a, some of the guys that you played with either in high school or played in um, the pr professional, the professional level, or right. even guys in college that that could come through and help you out. You know how Definitely. how is that? Just those relationships are still you know going strong and they're beneficial now. Right, that's huge. Um, I mean, Coach Jeremy, he, he's the assistant coach at, at Lynn English. Um, he played at English. Um, known him since we were 14, playing at the Y. Um, he's, he's my right hand. He's really there for anything we need, rides, coaching, um, support, motivation. Uh, so that's been huge. Uh, we have Coach Kwame, who, who played at Salem State, who I've known for a long time, has been a professional player now for seven years. Um, so he's he's been committed to, to being with these kids when he's around. Mm -hmm. And he just gives a different look. He's currently still playing at the pro level. So, um, that's huge. That's huge motivation, and he's a D three guy that actually made it as a pro. It, yeah. You know, it's to get to Division one level, Division two levels, even Division three levels, it's tough, yeah. really tough. So seeing a guy that played at the D three level and now also has a professional career is it's really motivated. And I and I want to bring other voices and other expertise around. Yeah, and you also started last week the open open gym at Breed Middle School. Yeah. That's going to be going on every Thursday. You've got the middle school and the high school uh -huh. going on. You know, how, how did that come about? Um, that really just came about of me reaching out. I wanted to get in Lynn. Get it. it's, it's hard to access gym in Lynn um, just because the use of it, high school sports, all, they're all, it's, it's busy. Yeah. So I, I finally got an email back saying I had some opportunity to get at, at, into Breed Middle School. So I jumped on it. Um, Thursdays was the only available day, um, which is tough for the high school kids because a lot of their schedules is Tuesday, yeah, Thursday. Tuesday, Thursday yeah. um, but it was an opportunity given. I didn't want to waste it, so we, we jumped on it. And first week, again, we only had about five hours of notice to put it out, and we got enough kids to play middle school upstairs full court, and we had the high school. Plus, we had some of the uh, some of the older guys that have played um, mm -hmm. come around uh, and play. So it was a good mix of some high school kids and, and some older guys that have been there and played high level at, um, at high school, high level college, yeah. and even some pros. It's so a, it's a two hour thing. Correct? It's about it's an hour and a half, hour and a half. from six thirty to eight. Um, and we plan on keeping it going after the winter season. It's kind of just we want to get our feet wet, and then uh, when the spring comes, that's when it's really needed to get in the gym and yeah. have that option to to keep it going. Yeah. But the middle school group was was fun because it was a lot of the kids that 
that got cut from the, the middle school teams mm -hmm. that showed up and and they needed that that outlet they needed that time to play and yeah. a lot of them jumped on it because they had nothing else going on mm -hmm. so trying to keep them busy you know yeah. keep them out of trouble even if it's one day a week um, it's something to look forward to it's an incentive for parents to say look you're not going to basketball on Thursday if you don't clean your room or yeah, yeah. keep your grades up so I think it's huge on that platform as well it's also a good way just to get them out the house and get them into just physical activities and playing because right. I know I know I see a lot of the kids I know they do a lot of these drills and stuff but they're not playing they're not and playing it's it's what's the point of the drills if you're not actually playing the you and, know and <laughs> work, you hit it you hit out, it right work there out what you've been doing what you've been doing all these times it doesn't translate a yeah. lot of kids are really good skilled guys but they don't play enough like like you and I grew up all we did was kind of play yeah. up and down and, and we developed skills just through instincts yeah. just okay we have to he cut the left off we go right so a lot of that is missing now so I'm doing a lot more pickup run um, mm -hmm. just to just to get them as you say playing yeah. and, and develop those those reads without being told what to do because um, it has to it has to translate from the, the drills to the to the, the real game which yeah. is the important part yeah is this I know I know this this is a startup but are you you know as as this thing grows, are you looking to do more things in the city with this as far as open runs and stuff like that? Because the, when when basketball season slows down, more, more opportunities might create right. themselves with the other schools? Yep, no, definitely. I've reached out to um, every coach. I've reached out to Corey Bingham at Lynn Tech. Um, I had Alvin. He came through to the first run uh, from Lynn English. Um, and then I want to get the classical guys, the Kip guys. Mm -hmm. uh, even I've talked to Dave Brown, um, and he wants to wants to keep it going. So we definitely want to keep this an ongoing thing. I, I want to be in the city. I'm at um, I'm actually at Connery on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then Washington. Oh, Tuesdays, Thursdays is um, Connery and, and Washington, and then Fridays is at Connery. So I'm 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 helping out there through Campfire. So mm -hmm. they have an after school program with kids. Okay. Some of the kids that come in to school at 7 a.m. for breakfast and they stay at Campfire till 5:30. Mm -hmm. We come in, my brother and myself, we come in and um, do an hour of basketball three days a week. So that's something we've been doing for now two years. Okay. Um, so that kind of influenced me to, to, to push a little harder to get into the city just because seeing the looks on those kids' faces when they got an outside group coming in, um, teaching them the game. And yeah. we gave them all basketballs for Christmas. They all, it was the big thing they wanted. Um, so it's a good group of like 20 kids that yeah that need that source of out, yeah, outlet. Definitely. And they, they really need it. And you can see it benefiting um, from just three days a week. So I want to keep that going. Yeah, definitely. Now, if people want to find out more about what you do, your programs and all that, please give them the website, Instagram page, and social media. Got you. Yeah, so the website um, is TonyGallo.com. Um, that has all the information, the background, um, registrations, um, pricing info, um, and everything's very flexible and negotiable. My email's on there as well, where you can reach out to, to me directly um, to work out some, some stuff financially. Um, the Instagram is just Tony Gallo Athletics. Mm -hmm. um, so there, we post a lot of content. You can reach me through there, through the, through the DMs, and I'm pretty responsive. And, making sure I get back to, to everybody that, that wants to work out. Yeah, definitely. And the open runs are, are going to be every Thursdays from 6.30 to 8 at Breed Middle School. Yep, 6.30 to 8 at Breed Middle School. Uh, those registrations will be on the website. Um, so, again, just reach out to me if you want to get in. Mm -hmm. And we're welcoming, obviously, we're, we're doing it in the city, but all around the cities are welcome to come mm -hmm. to come play. Middle school, high school. So if you got middle school kids and got high school kids that aren't doing nothing Thursdays, Send them over to breed. Uh, could they register? Could they register on site? They can register on site. Uh, I just mm -hmm. just for capacity wise, capacity. I just want to okay. try to get some some insight of who's coming in. But if if you forget to register, just come on by. We'll make it work. All right. Make it All work. right, ladies and gentlemen. It's my man Tony. Make sure to follow his Instagram page. Go to the website. Thursdays, six thirty to eight at Breed Middle School, and he said Connery, Washington. Yeah, we're at Connery, Washington for, um, yeah, weekly just for the, for the after-school program through Campfire. All right, so make sure you guys check those out. Guys, been watching Athletes Corner. Have a good one. All right, and we are back. Thank you, Tony, for that. In case just... A reminder, every Thursdays at Breed from 6.30 to 8, they're having open run for middle school and high school kids. So, yeah, if, you, if your kids didn't make the teams, make sure they go over there and get some work in, play some pickup, develop their skills, because if you ain't playing, you ain't going to get better. And what's the sense of 
doing all them drills if you ain't going to put them to use. Facts. All right, we got some high school sports update, high school sports segment. First up, we got go on a post-game interview with Kelleen Priera from St. Mary's, who gave Lynn English the shellacking. Talk about that when we come back. But check this post-game out. All right, you guys came out here, pretty much set the tone early on and never looked back. I mean, what was the mindset coming into this one? Um, well, we just knew that they were going to come out and they were going to fight. You know, they want to beat us. That, like, that would mean anything for them. And so we just had to be strong from the start of the game and really settle in as quick as we could. Yeah, talk about the defense. You guys created a lot of turnovers and those led to a lot of points. How about the defense that you guys are playing? Uh, yeah, we, pray, we tried to play really up in their face um, right from the start of the game, and that led us them to have a lot of turnovers. And we had a lot of fast breaks, which is how we got most of our points. And for you guys, last week, it was us. You guys had a, a, lo- a, tough t- a tough stretch last week, but you guys came out, played some hard fought games. You know, how was, how, was the, how was the mentality, your mental state coming into this one because of the hard fought games that you guys played last week? Um, yeah, we had a lot of games last week. We were like tired towards the end, but we just fought through those games, and we knew that this game we just had to. We couldn't like be sorry for ourselves if that we're tired or whatever. We just had to go out and we had to fight and we just had to win this game. All right, congratulations on the win. Thank you. <laughs> All right, then. Yeah, I don't want to pile on about that game, but yeah. <laughs> I posted, I said, this ain't how you honor Dr. King. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely ain't. Because, <laughs> man, yeah, that was bad. 12 and 1, St. Mary's, they t- <clears throat> they're 12 and 1. I think they're number one in the state. If not, I think they're like top top three, one of the top three on the girls' side. So they have, they have to lose in the state, actually. So uh, I don't know when their next game is, but yeah, that was a shellacking. Ah, uh, shellacking. Uh, next up, we Tech and Kip Academy played on Monday as well. Kip Academy won that one. We talked to Piero Canales and Juan Settle Singh after the game. So check this out. All right, fellas, you guys got out here. You guys got to uh, build a 20-point lead and pretty much held off the comeback. Uh, what got going for you guys? Um, we, we watched film. We, we talked about it with Coach Tobin. He said that they're really... Black Russell with the ball, they're lazy, so we so we pressured them with a bunch of turnovers and just told nervous uh, turn into uh, uh, fast break. Yeah, I agree. We was really aggressive on the top of the defense, and in the in the paint we held them down, didn't let them get too many easy buckets, and it's just we all worked out. All right, for you, for you guys, what, what, what's been clicking for you guys as of lately? What's been going? What's been clicking for you guys? Can you guys can you go on? Well, at first we weren't clicking at all because we were a brand new team, chemistry. We got a lot, a lot of young players, a bunch of freshmen, sophomores. We got a couple of seniors, a couple of juniors. But once the uh, once the juniors and seniors came in, we've known each other for a couple of years now. So the chemistry was already there, but we just it was just over time we built it. All right, and then lastly, we have Lionel Rivera from Lynn English. They played a crazy game against Chelsea like yeah. yesterday. Came out with the one point victory. Ooh. That was a- you said his full day, what? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, Lyle. <laughs> I'll be calling him Lyle. Lyle, 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 Lyle. You know, I got to I got to call him Lyle, man. Everybody knows him as Lyle, but I got to introduce him, uh, you know, his government name just for the audience who, don't, who might not know. I call him Lionel because of Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> so I say it too, Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Check guy, this out, and we're going to come back with some highlights. <laughs> All right, Lyle, this was, this was a wild one. Yes. Yeah, man, crazy, crazy down the run. What did you guys do to kind of pretty much maintain that lead because they kept looking at one of you guys? Yeah, they kept coming, honestly. I think our defense was just what, like, kept us in it. Every time Mel, he called, we really just talked it over, and I really just woke us up, I feel like. And when we came back in it, we just turned it up on defense. It got steals. Yeah, man. Said, um, you got to get you guys to stop paying for the sense of urgency early. Yeah. You guys were kind of sleepwalking for that mm-hmm. quarter. What kind of click in that quarter for you guys made that win? I think, I think at halftime, we just, like, we were in there, and then – when the teammates said, we just got to wake up, like, we really don't play like this. We never play like this, even in practice. We practice harder than this. And that really honestly just, like, woke us up, came out a little bit harder in the third quarter, uh, made runs. <laughs> 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 All right, 
What do you think a, kind of, a game like this does for you guys moving forward? I think a win like this really just wakes us up because we got way better competition on ahead of us and we just got to be ready for when, when they come and wake up like that too. All right, man, congratulations on the win. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lionel, for that one. Uh, English played 6-2 and two on the season. They play they're at Malden tomorrow. Also, there was a forfeit from on the girls' side. Chelsea High forfeited yesterday's game against Lynn English. I don't know yeah. that, but I guess. Hope everybody's all right, though. Yeah, you know. I, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't I don't heard, you know, I've heard of postponements for, for you know, if there's a COVID-related. Well, but that's why I forfeits. thought somebody forfeited. I hope, hope nobody's hurt or anything. Yeah. I hope everybody's in good spirits. Well, it was wild, but some games. There's some games this week. Uh, Classical and Beverly, your old teammates' team. Oh, Matt. Matt. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're they're pretty good too. Pretty good. That's pretty dope, good. man. Matt's yeah. cool guy. I think I might be at that one. I need to go to a game. I don't support him at all. No. I mean, I'm going to come support you one day, man. <laughs> Got you, brother. <laughs> and they'll be in the tournament for sure. Uh, all right. Check out these high school basketball highlights, and then we're going to go to NFL and NBA highlights. All right. And we are back. Top t <clears throat> My voice here. <laughs> All right, let's go NBA top 10 plays. And then we're going to do the wild card top 10 plays. I'm going to slid you a water. <laughs> Okay, next up, wild card weekend top 10 plays, and then we're gonna come back and give our picks, game picks for the divisional round.
are. <laughs> they sound like antiques and stuff there. Yeah, it's, it's weird, bro. We just talk about tattoos and tattoo shops. <laughs> and let's get to these picks. The divisional round. All right, Saturday's matchup. First game is Cincinnati at Tennessee. I got Cincinnati, man. You got Cincinnati? Yeah. I'm only picking Cincinnati because <laughs> I got some peoples that live in Cincinnati and they've been bugging me and hounding me about, they stay bugging me about the Bengals. So I'm going to, just to support them, I'm going to pick the Bengals. But if, he, if they lose, they definitely know I'm trolling them. All right, San Francisco at Green Bay. Ooh. You, you know, know, my third favorite team, man, a lot of people don't know is the, is the Packers. You going with the Packers? Mm-hmm. I think I will ride the 49ers train. Pause once again. <laughs> I put that Chew, chew over there. <laughs> <laughs> I think San Francisco is going to pull this one out. But a close game, too. You see how they come out with the boombox? And then they come out to Gremlin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they come out to Gremlin every game, though. Like, oh. they don't get old after all. Oh, they do that every game. Yeah. Oh, I thought they picked different songs. <laughs> nah, yeah, they come with the Gremlin. Well, well. I guess, I guess. It's not the worst song, but yeah. I mean, after a while, it's like oh, yeah. you lose the thrill. Yeah, you got to switch it up. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sunday, Los Angeles Rams at Tampa. I'm going to go with Tampa Bay, man. You going to go with Tampa? It's just in life we've learned just not to bet against Brady. It's just it's just life. Not to bet. If he loses, he loses. But we just know you just don't bet against Brady. So, yeah, I'm going with Tampa, too. And then Camp Buffalo at Kansas City, last game of the weekend. Kansas City. Kansas. Yeah, I'm going with Kansas City just because when I saw what I saw, that Buffalo Bills defender trying to disown the Pats. I don't like that. And plus, I ain't picking the Bills. I don't pick no AFC East team. They're all trash. Forget them. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that is a wrap. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, not next week, but the week after. Stevie's going to be back for the Super Bowl. We're going to try to get Greg on here. If you ever. <laughs> but we might get canceled if he comes on here. But you know, oh, oh, we might just create, create an, another magnificent <laughs> piece of work but, involving Greg. But Greg's going to come up. We're going to get Craig <laughs> on this program. I, I said Craig. Greg on this program. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Thanks, Pedro. As always, have a great one, everybody.